16 years ago, uh, a group of us, including Cyril at Hamilton College, traveled from Syracuse to Tallahassee to open up some Antarctic marine sediment cores. And Cyril was part of that group and did a nice little summer internship on the magnetic susceptibility of some of those sediments in the Gurlash Strait um, when he was a student at Paris 6. Uh, he went on from that initial research experience to do great things, earning his first PhD at the University of Orleans in France, and then most recently <coughs> under the French program, a second PhD, which qualifies him to do PhD <coughs> supervision at the University of Pierre Mercury um, in Paris, France. He's been um, an assistant professor and research scientist at the Institut Research and Development in Noumea for the last 13 years, focusing on mangroves. He's worked um, in mangrove systems around the world, uh, French Guiana, Suriname, Guadalupe, uh, and New Caledonia, and most re recently he's been on assignment in Vietnam. And so it's my great pleasure to welcome Cyril, who will speak to us on the mangrove, a natural biogeochemical reactor. Thank you very much, Jenny. So good afternoon, everyone. So I am French, yes. <laughs> so I, I am living in Saigon, in Vietnam, and, uh, but I, I am French and I'm working for a French uh, governmental uh, research agency. So I am a geochemist and uh, my main object of study are mangrove sediments and I'm mainly working on carbon cycling and trust metal dynamics in uh, mangrove ecosystems. And today I'd like to highlight that mangrove sediments can be true biogeochemical reactor because every particles that are deposited in the mangrove can be dissolved, releasing lots of elements in pore water. And this element can go to fish, crabs, to biota, to trees. But this element can be precipitated again to form new minerals. Okay, so as Jean said, so I was an undergraduate uh, when I worked with him in 1999. And uh, so I defended my PhD in 2003 and I was born in 19 77. So work in New Caledonia from 2005 and 2012. So the title of my research project is Organic Matter and Trust Metal Dynamic Along Mangrove Coastline. And I'd like to understand the processes and to determine the fluxes between land and sea and the role of mangrove in the transfer between land and sea. Okay, so uh, just to show you that there's an increased number of uh, citation of my publication, not because I'm very good, but because there are more and more people working on mangroves, and mainly people from China and in India. Uh, since the beginning of uh, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, people started to be more interested in mangroves. So I'm working for IRD. Uh, it's a public scientific and technological institute, uh, depending of both the Ministry of Research and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And we have 56 research units, about 900 researchers. And among these 900 researchers, uh, 400 to 500 are assigned overseas. So our objectives, our main uh, objective is to work on environment, on health problem in developing countries, and how uh, the societies of developing countries uh, deal with the evolution of their resource and the impact of climate change on these societies and the ecosystems. So this is the main countries where we are established. So mainly in uh, former French colonies in America and in Asia, and also in French overseas territory. Uh, here in La Réunion, in New Caledonia, in French Guiana, in Guadeloupe, Martinique, which are still French territories. So first, I would like to evidence that mangrove is a remarkable ecosystem. So for those who are not aware of, mangroves are forested ecosystems developing on 75% of tropical and subtropical coastlines. And there's only 60 uh, mangrove species. So it's quite a low biodiversity ecosystem because uh, the environmental conditions are quite hard uh, for the vegetations and the mangrove trees they have developed uh, adaptation capacity uh, to fight uh, against high salinity values against the anoxia in the soil because the soils are waterlogged uh, and also to fight against the instability of the substrate because of the waves because of the currents 
So concerning the anoxia, uh, some mangrove trees are able to take the oxygen which is in the atmosphere, then to translate it into the root system, and then translate it into the trees. So there are two main uh, area of mangrove distribution, the Indo-Pacific uh, area, which is composed of about 60 uh, mangrove species, and the Atlantic area, uh, only 15 mangrove species. And uh, actually, the area covered by mangrove is about 140,000 uh, kilometers square, and it decreased a lot in the recent year. So the first mangroves are described in sedimentological and rocks records uh, in the Eocene. So the hypothesis is that the first mangrove appear around here, uh, which is now the Papua New Guinea, and which is the currently the hotspot of mangrove biodiversity. And then they colonize the, the shoreline close to close, they did this, and they arrive in the Atlantic area. That may explain that only 20 mangrove species are existing in this area, and we can find 60 species here. It also explains the fact that there are no uh, mangrove species in Hawaii or in Tahiti, because the young mangrove uh, propagules were not able to cross the Pacific Ocean. So resources supplied by mangroves are really precious for developing countries and for people who live uh, along the coastline. They supply the elementary needs because lots of people are fishing and hunting in the mangroves. So these are some fishermen uh, in Vietnam. So they, they try to catch fish and crabs, but also shrimp. And mangrove plant can be used as uh, medicinal substances. And mangrove trees are used to construct uh, the small boat and also to construct some small houses. So they are really important for uh, local people and also in New Caledonia, where I used to live, mangroves can be considered as taboo because spirits can live, uh, spirits of the ancestors can live in the mangrove. Uh, mangroves also have some ecological roles. Uh, they stabilize the shoreline and they act as a barrier against erosion. And during the tsunami in 2004, uh, the coastline uh, which had mangroves were protected against the tsunami and the costs uh, of reconstruction were really less lower. Because it's a really high productive ecosystem, it's at the basis of the trophic change uh, along tropical coastline. So that's why uh, mangrove waters are usually, usually rich in shrimp and uh, in fish. And it shelters a big animal biodiversity. So these pictures were taken uh, in Vietnam. But uh, where I used to work in French Guiana, there are also some anaconda, jaguar, uh, red ibis living in the mangrove. Lots of birds live in the mangrove. It has a role of biofilter uh, between land and sea, for the wastewater. Unfortunately, uh, mangroves is a, is a threatened ecosystem. So this is a picture taken in New Caledonia and a road was constructed in the middle of the mangrove. Uh, currently, 3.4 billion uh, of people live less than 60 kilometers from the coast, and uh, maybe in 15 years, 75 population, 75 percent of the world population will live uh, close to the shoreline. And now, if we compare the density of population, so in millions of people here, and the area uh, covered by mangrove in this country. Here, so this is in hectare, you can see that where there are lots of mangroves, there is also a high density of population. There is a high uh, demographic increase in these countries. So that's why mangroves are an endangered, uh, mangrove is an endangered ecosystem. And I looked at the data for Florida, and you may have uh, 200,000 uh, of hectare for 15, billion, 15 millions of people uh, in Florida. So it's quite high. Okay, so this population growth mainly in southern countries, in developing countries, uh, induced a greater urbanization, an expansion of the industrial activities and the prospecting and exploitation of natural resources, like in New Caledonia, which is the third nickel producing country in the world. 
And so between uh, the 80s and, and 2K, 2000, mangrove disappeared at a rate of 1 to 2% per uh, year. This rate is higher uh, than the rate of disappearing of uh, coral reefs or rainforests. Uh, I took this picture in Sri Lanka, uh, maybe three years ago. So it's a big mangrove close to, uh, to a city, and all the wastewater are released uh, in the mangrove, inducing the an autrophization and the development of lots of algae. So there is no more oxygen in the water column and no more fish, but there are still lots of people uh, that have nothing else to live that fishing in the mangrove. So it's very important for those people uh, to have clean mangroves, and so for us to work on mangroves, to speak, to talk about mangroves, to protect the ecosystem, which is very important for developing countries. And recently, so that was six, six months ago, uh, there were uh, oil spills in the Sudaban in Bangladesh, which is the biggest mangrove in the world. So it was not a big uh, oil spill, only 350 uh, liters of oil, but it's just not possible to clean the mangrove and to clean the root system. Okay, so I um, just would like to say a few words about the mangroves in French Guiana and the uh, organic carbon dynamic along this specific uh, coastline. Uh, the distribution of mangrove in French Guiana is linked uh, to the system of dispersion, sediment dispersion of the Amazon. So lots of sediments are going through the Amazon of each year, and because of the currents, all the mud is going on the Guyana's coastline, and on this mud bank, one, only one mangrove species can colonize. And so this is the front of the mud bank, and on the front of the mud bank, <coughs> we have an, a colonization of the mangrove trees this way. So we have young mangrove forests here, that's what look uh, young mangrove looks like. Then uh, mature mangrove and then sedescent mangrove. So young mangrove, old mangrove, and it's, it's the same mud bank, so the same quality of the sediment. No former mangrove, so no enrichment of organic, of organic matter before. So with this system, we are able to follow uh, the evolution of the geochemical properties of sediments with the development of the forests. Okay, so our objectives were mainly to understand uh, the organic diagenesis in these sediments, how tides, how, uh, what kind of influence may have the mangrove trees, the root system, the development of the root system, and what can be the influence of organic diagenesis on uh, truss metal uh, distribution and speciation. So this is sediment core about one meter and this is some organic carbon data uh, carbon uh, nitrogen ratio some carbon 13 data <coughs> it's just to show you that in mangrove sediments we can have a mix of different kind of organic matter <coughs> so we can have leaf litter we can have development of the root system we can have marine algae and we can have terrestrial uh, alloctonous organic matter and within this system so we have sorry Here is the composition of the mud bank, and when the mangrove forest developed, it induced only a little organic enrichment, around 5 to 10 centimeters, and it's mainly the root system, because all the leaf litter is exported from the system by tides. Uh, we can see that the, this enrichment is linked to the development of the root system, and we worked on the molecular composition uh, of this sediment, mainly lignin and carbohydrates, and we obtained at surface sediment the signature of uh, algae, sea algae, and then this is the signature of, of wood, woody tissues, and then of really oxidized com coming from uh, the erosion of the Amazon watershed. So it's alloctonous and terrestrial organic matter. So th it was for young mangrove forest. So and this one for an old mangrove, a mature mangrove forest. So this one is further from the sea, 
and now we have a big organic accumulation with uh, total organic content reaching almost 20% of the quantity of the sediment. We have lowest uh, carbon-13 values, higher uh, carbon-nitrogen ratios, and different uh, composition in lignin and in carbohydrates. In fact, because it's big trees with a close canopy, uh, algae cannot develop at sediment surface. And because we are really far uh, from the sea, the tides do not export the leaf litter. So we can have an accumulation of leaf litter explaining this high content in organic carbon. And now we don't have the same composition. And at the top uh, of the sediment, we have high content in glulose, in glucose, and uh, this is uh, pyrolysis uh, index, showing that uh, this organic matter is poor in oxygen. And if it's poor, it means that it's quite fresh. It was not yet oxidized, not yet transformed. So we have fresh organic matter deriving from leaves at the surface, and then we have a mix between mangrove leaves and mangrove roots. And again, at depth, we have the same composition that in the young mangroves, because it's the same sediment coming from the Amazon watershed at the same time. OK, so within this system, we may have uh, a lot of autochthonous organic carbon deriving from the root system, deriving from the leaves. We have some autochthonous organic carbon. And this organic matter will be decomposed uh, by different uh, redox processes. During the rainy season, so this is a picture for the rainy season, the water table in the mangrove is quite high. So the sediment is almost always waterlogged whatever the tides. So there is very few oxygen within the sedimentary column. And the main process position of organic matter is sulfato reduction. So sulfate are reduced, producing sulfides. And sulfide with dissolved iron will form pyrite. And this is some thromboides of pyrites. So they can be uh, neoformed within the rainy season. And we have only a small layer which can be oxidized. But during uh, the dry season, since we are far from the influence of the sea, during the dry season, the water table is lower. And so we can observe some mud cracks. And the oxygen of the atmosphere can go within the sediments. And then we have a quite high uh, oxidized layer. And so the sulfides here can be oxidized, releasing in the pore water some sulfate but also iron and also uh, H+. Plus. So the sediment will be really acidic during the rainy season. So it will not be the same uh, decomposition process. And we can see the difference in the decomposition process studying the different molecules. The processes are not the same if the sediment is anoxic, or if the sediment contains oxygen, or if uh, bacteria can use uh, nitrogen oxide or iron oxide for the decomposition of organic matter. This has an influence on truss metal dynamics because the pyrites, when they form, they can, fix, they, can, they can fix, they can be a sink for truss metal. The main problem uh, in French Guiana is, is mercury, but this one will not go uh, in pyrite. But we also observe chromium, nickel uh, within the pyrite. But when the pyrite dissolves, then all the metals will be also released in the pore water. So here we have lots of truss metal within the pore water. And here they can be uh, included in uh, oxide, iron oxide uh, minerals, and here in more stable pyrite. So uh, that was the publication which were published with the results of my uh, PhD. So in reviews like uh, Estrain Constellation Science, uh, Geochemica, Cosmochemica Acta, Biogeochemistry, or Organic Geochemistry. So it was between 2000, and I finished my PhD in, in December 2003. Uh, and then in 2006, I was uh, hired by RRD, and I would like to work again uh, on, uh, on carbon in mangrove. So now I will uh, show you some results from New Caledonia. So New Caledonia is here in the southwest part of the Pacific Ocean. 
It's two hours from Brisbane, three hours from Sydney, and three hours from Auckland. So this is a 500 kilometers long island for 50 kilometers width. Yeah, okay. And so in New Caledonia, we have 24 mangrove species colonizing 80% of the west coastline of the island and 14 to 20% of the east coastline. So we have 24 mangrove species, but 55% of the mangroves are rhizophora mangroves, so those with the big roots, and 40% are the Avicenia uh, mangroves, so the gray mangrove with the small nematophores. So you may know this picture, it's the famous hurt. In French, we say le coeur de veau. So this picture is from mangroves in New Caledonia. And these pictures represent the typical uh, zonation of mangrove in New, in New Caledonia. So at the highest elevation of the tidal zone, the salinity is really high because of evaporation process. So the vegetation cannot develop. And we may also have uh, only have some bushes of salicornia, sarcocornia. Then, at an in intermediate uh, elevation in the tidal zone, we may have these small uh, shrubby Avicinia trees. And then, at the lowest level of uh, the tidal zone, we have the rhizophora trees. So, mangrove zonation is linked to the soil salinity because the different species do not have the same abilities uh, to cope with high salinity values in the soil. But the salinity value in the pore water is linked to the elevation of the soil and to evaporation processes. But now the hurt looks like this. So it means that the salt flat area, which were highly saline, uh, is now colonized by Avicenia trees. And if it was colonized, it means that the salinity uh, dropped down. So salinity dropped down. Uh, we may at several years with high precipitation rate, but it may also link to uh, the increase of sea level. So uh, if the sea level increases, the length of immersion by tide will increase, evaporation process will decrease, and soil salinity will also decrease. And we may imagine in 20 uh, to 50 years, there will be no more hurt, hurt because the rise of our trees will be able to colonize this area if the salinity is still uh, going down. So you may also know this uh